everyone, Dark of All Trades here. Before we get into this video, I have some very important questions. Do you exist? I would say I exist. If you answer yes, are you an atheist? Some of my subscribers are and some are not. I am an atheist, as I've mentioned many times. If you are, would you say that you are scientifically educated, whatever that means to you? I would suppose it means being educated in different areas or deeply in a single area of science. I have a master's in education, so science is not necessarily my forte, but I could argue that since I have taken many science classes throughout my academic career, I am likely scientifically educated. If you answered yes to all three of these questions, then we're done. We have answered the question put forth by the title of this video. Grab yourself an ice cream or a non-dairy frozen treat if you are lactose intolerant. If you answered no to any of those except the first one, or if you're just wondering why I asked those relatively silly questions, hang out with me as we check out a channel called Know the Word Dash Live the Word and their video asking the real question everyone's been asking, are scientifically educated atheists extinct dash in three and a half minutes brackets modern science forces the issue end brackets? I thought everyone knew the word. <laughs> But enough of that tomfoolery, let's get into the video. Welcome to Know the Word, Live the Word. This is Chris Bender. For the last several decades, the so-called new atheists have been winning converts to their religion. And what religion would that be, Chris? Buddhism? Do you think new atheists are converting people to their religion of Buddhism? That sounds silly. I don't know any, at least remotely popular, or famous new atheist who is a Buddhist, except for maybe Sam Harris. Is he a Buddhist? He definitely has spoken highly of it, although we'll say that he has found some of the practices to be absurd, so I'm not sure. But I don't know how many times I'm going to have to go over this. Atheism is not a religion. No definition I've ever found would classify not believing in a god or even the belief that no gods exist as a religion. It's a single position on a single issue. Uh, neither theism nor atheism have tenets or dogma or rituals or any of the sort of things that you would expect uh, to qualify as a religion. As a minor linguistic note here, though I understand that he used the term he did because he seems to want to push that atheism is just another religion, one does not convert to atheism. Once one no longer believes that God exists, they deconvert from their religion to either having no religion or some form of atheistic religion like many forms of Buddhism. By banging the drum of reason, make no mistake, atheism is a type of religion that requires more faith than anyone now could reasonably have. Ah, I see you follow Frank Turk's school of terrible arguments. It takes no faith at all to not accept a claim that some number of gods exist. That is all that is required to be an atheist. If I tell you the moon's core is actually a giant diamond, how much faith does it take for you to not believe that? Or take the strong atheist position. How much faith does it take for you to believe the core of the moon is not a giant diamond? Not a lot, I would guess. The same is true for atheism. And as I see time and time again when this argument is made, even if I grant that it requires more faith to be an atheist, then so what? Is faith a bad thing? Maybe you're saying too much faith is a bad thing? I would put forth that one does not reasonably have faith anyway. Faith is belief in something with an absence of evidence or reason in some or all of it. If there was a good reason to believe something, you wouldn't need faith. You just need the reason. You see, up to the 20th century, most scientists had concluded that the universe was eternal. So what? Most scientists at one time thought the Earth was flat. Most scientists at one time believed in a god. At one time, most scientists believe something that turns out to have been wrong. But what disproved those wrong beliefs? It was better science. How did we come to the conclusion that the local instantiation of the universe had a beginning? We used better science than the scientists of the past did. What changes science is better science, not faith, not religion, and certainly not a god. Meaning they believe the universe never had a beginning. Well, with the growth of modern science, and with significantly more research, it has been definitively confirmed that the universe did have a beginning. But here's the clincher. All the scientific data points to the universe being created out of nothing. Um, source? Citation needed here. Breaking down this claim just a little bit, I ask the question I always do in this situation. What is meant by nothing in this case? If you're using the meaning that most cosmologists and physicists like Lawrence Krauss use, then try to switch nothing to mean a lack of something, I'm gonna call you on it. I haven't watched further, so this is just a warning. If I grant the nothing that cosmologists and physicists used, I can agree with this point. 
but I'm watching you. So can anyone truly be an educated, honest atheist? Yes. By most normative definitions, I would qualify as an educated, honest atheist. Anyone who answered yes to my initial questions honestly would also likely qualify. Though this is a bit different as you're just asking about educated, which since I have multiple college degrees, I would qualify as educated. I am doing my best to examine claims and responding in what I believe to be an honest way, so I would be considered honest. I don't believe a god exists, so I would be considered an atheist. Check, check, and check. I am a little concerned about the word truly in this case. What do you mean, truly? With science pointing to the universe being created out of nothing, wouldn't that make those who'd prefer God not to exist agnostics? No. No, it would not. The term atheist and theist refer to belief. The terms gnostic and agnostic refer to knowledge. Preference does not come into play in any of those terms. You can be any of those and prefer a god to exist or prefer a god not to exist. You could be the most Gnostic of all theists, knowing your god exists and nothing could or would ever change your mind, and still prefer that a god not exist. I don't know why you're trying to add preference here. Some atheists prefer that a god exists but still don't believe. Atheist or theist is a true dichotomy. There is no middle ground. You either believe or you do not believe. I'm going to rewind just a smidgen here because it is relevant to the next part and I want you all to get it clearly. With science pointing to the universe being created out of nothing, wouldn't that make those who'd prefer God not to exist agnostics? Meaning they just don't know how the universe got here. That isn't what agnostic means. Not believing in a god has nothing to do with a belief in how the universe got here. One could even believe in a god, but not think this god created the universe, a non-creator deity. Most pagan deities are not creator deities. Do you think Norse pagans think Thor created the universe? Do you think the ancient Greeks thought Hermes made the universe or even had a hand in it? These people were theists that worshipped a god that they didn't think made the universe. According to Greek mythology, the goddesses Gaia and Chaos created the universe. But if an ancient Greek person didn't believe in Gaia and Chaos, but still believed in other gods, they could believe in those gods but not know how the universe got here. I would even argue that you don't know how the universe came to be, but you assert a non-hypothesis and accept it as true without any test methodology or verifying evidence. So you don't know, just like literally everyone else doesn't. But you pretend to know. It is intellectually dishonest. By your criteria, maybe there isn't an intellectually honest, educated theist. Since all that we see developed from nothing, how can anyone truly say there can't be a god? Like this. <clears throat> there can't be a god. That was pretty easy. I truly said that. That wonderful joke aside, the reason is that you are committing a fallacy called a non sequitur. Your conclusion does not follow. Something developing from nothing doesn't tell you anything about the existence of anything else. You're adding something to reality without justification. You need to show that a god first exists and second is required to develop a universe. If there is a god, then there is not nothing. There is something. You cannot say nothing and something exists at the same time. That violates the second law of logic. What the universe was developed from cannot be something and nothing, not something, at the same time. If you're using the cosmologist slash physicist definition of nothing, then it isn't not something, but something like a false vacuum state or lowest energy state possible. Either way, your nothing either disproves your god or puts you in a position where your god isn't required. In either scenario, your god could not exist and the situation still be true. I love it when their own argument unknowingly disproves their god. No honest person who isn't fooling themselves believes that anything can come from nothing. Everything I just said applies here too. You don't believe there was nothing, so the argument here is moot. Or you do believe that there was nothing and you're not an honest person. There really isn't any way around your argument. You've trapped yourself with your own argument. This is fun. What else you got? This is why some scientists point to aliens possibly creating our universe. Not really, though your language here really helps you hedge. If you are referring to the dishonest interview from Ben Stein when he asked Richard Dawkins about something like a god that could have done it. It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology 
and designed a form of life that they seeded onto, perhaps this, this planet. And when he asked me that question, um, something like, could you ever imagine any kind of intelligent design, I bent over backwards to try to give intelligent design its best shot. Its best shot for me was uh, something like design by an alien intelligence, something like what Francis Crick and Leslie Orgel had proposed as directed panspermia. I don't believe in that, I didn't believe in that, I never said I did believe in that, but I was trying to bend over backwards to give intelligent design its best shot. Richard Dawkins was using an exaggerated example that he made clear he doesn't actually believe. But I would grant that there's likely some scientist somewhere who thinks this. It isn't really relevant, but okay. But that just begets another question. Where do the aliens come from? Where does your god come from? Initially, this question he asks feels like a good argument from the theist side. The issue is that they don't have a good answer. They give some outside of the universe answer, but don't allow others to give the exact same answer. They will also give the always existed answer as well as a way to dodge the question, if the universe was created by your God, what created your God? The issue is that for every answer they give, we can just say, why can't we say the same thing about the universe? Yet the one source that is consistent with everything we see coming from nothing is the Bible. This is definitely not true. As I stated before, you are asserting that it was nothing, but your God created the universe. Other religious myths have similar origins. The Greeks have Gaia and Chaos. In Norse mythology, there was a big dark vast of emptiness called Ginungagap from which two realms came from. Ancient Egyptian mythology has several creation myths, all hold that the world had arisen out of the lifeless waters of chaos called Nu. So no, this take is woefully ignorant. I would be surprised if a religious group didn't have everything coming from nothing. God, who is unseen, spoke the universe, including our world, into existence. You can call it the Big Bang if you want. Aha, 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 I see what you did there. If you look at Greek mythology, the two goddesses mated and then created the universe. A much more plausible Big Bang, if you ask me. But seriously, the Big Bang is not an explosion, but a rapid expansion of the initial singularity. For there to be something spoken, it requires a sound wave, which, if there was nothing, sound can't travel through. Sound can't even travel in space, where there is something, let alone where there is nothing. If there is no air to vibrate, or some other medium of which to travel, then there is no sound. So, there was no sound, or there was something. Again, disproving your own argument. Which may fit, since God's voice sounds like mighty thunder. Books like Is Atheism Dead and Evidence That Demands a Verdict demonstrate that the more we dig, the more biblical objections are answered. Apologist books that have been torn to shreds by skeptics are not good sources. But maybe you're just referring to the fact that apologists have given answers to questions irrespective of the truth of those answers? Making a claim in response to a question is not exactly an answer. That claim needs to be backed up, which is something that these books fail to do. Here are a few so-called errors that have been refuted. Many cried out that Jesus was just a mythical character, only existing in ancient writings. Now, even the skeptics recognize his life and death by crucifixion are well documented by external references. Or some, and I can argue that most skeptical biblical scholars think that some guy or multiple guys on who the character of Jesus is based on existed. There is still some contention, and the fact that some guy existed does not mean that his life or death was well documented. In fact, name one single contemporary secular source from Jesus' life, and I'll give you 20 years after that even mention him. The problem here is that they don't exist. There is literally none available. But even though I'm a mythicist, I usually grant this point because it doesn't actually matter for the argument. How about King David of the Bible, who is said only to be a legend? Well, after some archaeological digging, David's identity and kingdom were confirmed. The Bible speaks several times of the ancient Hittite people who scholars concluded were a made-up people group. After some more digging, lo and behold, the Hittite civilization was discovered. In Daniel 5, Belshazzar is listed as king of Babylon. Scholars concluded the Bible must be wrong because there's no evidence of that king 
you guessed it, a little more digging, and it was discovered that Belshazzar ruled as co-regent in Babylon while his father, Nabonidus, was away. Then many claimed that the book of Acts was riddled with errors containing locations and titles that existed nowhere else in the ancient world. Yet again, Luke was vindicated as being accurate as more and more discoveries occurred. This all points to the fact that the Bible is reliable. I don't think so, but it depends on what. There are accuracies in the Bible much like there are accuracies in the Spider-Man comics. The fact that a city existed that we didn't think did before, or that a group of people existed that we didn't think did before, or that some person in a book existed that we didn't think did, or even that the book has some historical accuracies about rulers or leaders, all of this has no bearing on any other claim in the book. I could grant literally every single mundane claim in the Bible. I could grant that Jesus said every word the Bible says while he was alive. I could grant that people thought they heard God speak to them. I could grant that Moses existed, even though we know he didn't. I could even grant that there was a first human who mated with a second human to start the human race as we know it. That there was a global flood that killed almost everything. All of this and you would still not be a single step closer to demonstrating your supernatural claims. Every single mundane claim in the Bible could have happened without a God. It says absolutely nothing about the truth of Jesus' supposed resurrection. It says nothing about the existence of a God, nor does it give you any evidence of how the universe was formed. You are presupposing a God and then using it to fill the gaps in your knowledge. Your exact same argument here can be used against you, as I can say, Scholars once thought that lightning was caused by the gods, but with some study and experimentation, we learned that it is entirely a natural phenomenon. We once thought that droughts were a punishment from God, but now we know that droughts occur naturally. Every scientific fact which we have an explanation for that we once thought came from a god, we now know came from something natural. This all points to your god not existing, just your argument used against you. That seems to be happening a lot in this video. The Word of God can be trusted, so the most reasonable option is to seek God now with all your heart. The most reasonable option now is to dismiss God and seek knowledge with all of your heart. When I can take your argument and change the wording so it says the opposite with similar results, you aren't really making a good argument. And that's the end of his video. He ended answering a different question than what he had asked. This seems to be a trend. Even if I lost my mind and granted his points that it is possible and in fact more reasonable that a god created the universe, one can still be scientifically educated and intellectually honest holding a slightly less reasonable position to a question that has an unknown answer. That's it for this one. What did you think? Do you think that the evidence Chris gave was reasonable and perhaps atheists cannot be honest and scientifically educated? Or do you think that he missed something with his argument? Let me know in the comments below. I think that pretty much every argument he made here either didn't support his position at all or can be used to support a different position against his own. That makes his arguments pretty weak. No honest person believes the like button shouldn't be hit. So to prove that you're an honest person, hit that like button. I challenge you. With that, if you haven't already, wouldn't you agree that the most reasonable option now is to hit the subscribe button based on all the evidence provided in the Bible? If you really like this kind of content and want to support me by giving me an energy drink so I can stay focused with my ADD kicking in, head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com backslash darkofalltrades. Every little bit helps me get to the next video out a little bit faster. And as always, keep learning.